Hi, I'm Tim Green, and this is another one of my uh, repairable atomizer head to head videos. And this time I'm going to be looking at the Bully AT A2T and the A2TM. Uh, this is following off my review of the uh, Bully A2. Uh, before I get on with the review, uh, I'd just like to say a big thank you to everybody really who's been subscribing to my channel on YouTube and uh, for all the positive comments I've had, I've had uh, a lot of really, really nice and kind comments from, uh, from viewers who've seen the previous videos in the series uh, and I've noticed a lot more activity on UK Vapors and the Classifieds, people looking for A2s. Um, that's great, and I, I hope you all get sorted. I know there's a bit of a shortage of them at the moment. Uh, hopefully, uh, that'll all get remedied in time. Um, I also have to apologise for the break since my last set of videos. Um, as you can probably tell, my voice is a bit deeper this time around. Uh, I am just getting over a cold. Um, however, I now have my taste buds back. I, I had to stop making these mo these videos simply because I, I, I lost my sense of taste quite a bit as you do with colds um, and I, I can't really give you an objective opinion on, on the flavour that's produced by an atomizer if I can't taste it can I so so anyway uh, enough uh, waffle from me um, let's go get on to the A2T um, and, and see how we go Right, here we have, let me just adjust the camera a bit there, here we have the usual layout now. Uh, the A2T is similar to the A2, except rather than use uh, a 701 cart, uh, if you remember the A2 uses, uses one of these, uh, or recently with a with a, a drip tip adapter, you can you can drip into an A2. The A2T uses the uh, the Joy Ego style um, tank cartridge that holds 1.1 mil. Um, I think this this format's really been adopted um, by by a couple of atomizers now. Um, Simply because of the convenience factor, I think. I mean, these are really easy to get hold of, um, and a lot of people are, are now starting on, you know, the Joy tanks, the Ego tanks, uh, or Tornado tanks, whatever you want to call them, uh, as their first PV. So it, it's kind of familiarity, um, really. So this is a obviously a black tank cartridge. There's uh, one point one mil. Um, of juice in there. Today's juice, the juice I'm using for this review is the is my RY High 5 uh, from vaporworld.co.uk um, but anyway enough of that. Um, so we've got the tank cart there. We have here the collar where the, the tank cart sits inside like so. Obviously the, the atomizer section um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second because I do things slightly differently with the, the tanks um, and, and then the familiar section here if you well if you're familiar if you're used to tank atomizers um, is basically it's the uh, the pin and that slides nicely inside the tank cart and inside there there's a, a wick that feeds it to the coil. I want to talk about talk to you about that in a moment too, in more detail. Well, first of all, we'll look at the uh, the atomizer element. Now this is the same sort of setup um, that's that, you know that, that you've got in the bullet. Well, it's exactly the same setup that you've got in the A2, um, and similar also to the Mark, Mark T bug. Um, I wire mine up slightly differently. Uh, I didn't do it for the Mark T because I was um, the, the, the recommendation there is is using the pre-supplied uh, wick wire combo um, 
and in all fairness, while I've uh, in the last week since I've uh, um, not been doing these videos, I've been doing a bit of tinkering, and I've come across a couple of things that I can do to to improve the vapor production and the flavor within uh, an A2T. These same techniques will, of course, apply to the Mark T bug. Uh, should you opt to get one of those. But basically, normally, um, when I'm wiring up a uh, tank atomizer, I use this stuff, which is uh, 0.15 millimeter, uh, it's 38 SWG, that's nickel chrome or nichrome wire. Um, that's the one that I normally use. Um, however, I've started using, um, for my tanks anyway, uh, this, which is, is basically the same, it's, uh, it's, it's 36 SWG uh, nichrome wire, 0 0.20 millimeters. Why have I started using this? Well, it, it, it's actually a lower resistance wire, which means that to get the same resistance, so just for example, like with, with this, if I wanted to um, get, say, 1.8 ohms resistance, um, I would have to make sure that the coil was made out of three centimeters of wire, um, and then you got the tails on top. The resistance on on the 0.2 it's completely gone out of my mind now with what it is, but it is slightly lower. And basically, you have to use you have to wind more of it. Now, where on this one I might use three centimeters, on this one I'll use four doesn't sound like much difference but it gives you a larger coil and the larger the coil the larger surface area of the coil the uh, more vapor that's produced now because I've, I've gone for um, a lower resistance wire I'm actually producing a coil that's of the same resistance but it's larger so they're more surface area and it's therefore producing more vapour. Um, I'm still debating whether I'm going to switch to 0.2 uh, for other atomizers, but for the moment I'm sticking with 0.2 for tanks and 0.15 for the other atomizers because this works brilliantly. Um, the coil that I've got on there, this is 1.5 ohm uh, coil. Um, now as you'll see, the slight difference here between here and in the bully videos is I, I like longer tails. I like there to be a little extra wick. It holds a little bit more juice and wicks a bit more. Uh, so that's the difference in this bit. Um, so that, that, that helps me with the vapor, vapor production. Now here in the, in, in the pen, um, when you get this uh, from new, um, normally what you'll find inside is inside the pin you'll find a piece of uh, rolled up uh, stainless steel mesh uh, and within that mesh is a piece of wick itself to help with the, help with the uh, um, well, help with the wicking really. They use a piece of wick and then wind it around, uh, and it and it's some basically it's this. I don't know if you can see this. And just at the end there, you've got a bit of exposed fiberglass wick, and then the rest of your mesh, and that will just slide to sit inside there. Now, what I've been doing recently, I've been if anybody's been following conversations, etc., I've been that I've been having on UK vapors, I've been playing a lot more with uh, Genesis style atomizers. Now, these are atomizers that use stainless steel mesh for a wick instead of fiberglass mesh, and it occurred to me that that works really well, and the stainless steel mesh does not impart any flavour. And there's a really, really good vapor, a good flavor in, in Genesis style atomizers. Why is this? Well, the difference between this that's supplied and this that's in here now and, and, and what you use in a Genesis is that this is pure, unadulterated stainless steel mesh with the fiberglass wick inside. It's not been oxidized. This, if it touches the coil, will short. 
it's conductive. That's fine, although I've noticed when you're pulling on, you know, you're pushing on tank carts, um, taking them off, sometimes the, the wick can grip inside, so it, it pops, starts popping out and you push it down. Now, obviously, if you push it down too far while it's on top of the wick arrangement, this is going to touch that atomizer element. If that touches it shorts. Now a short at that point is going to produce a bad taste. Now I've learnt this from the from the Genesis atomizers. If it if the wick's not um, oxidized enough, you get a metallic y sort of taste. Now what I think's been happening with tank these the, with these tank atomizers is that basically it's supposed to only just be touching, you know, just a little bit of fiberglass touching the bottom there. And that's fine. But if you don't get the positioning of this precisely right, touches the metal here, that's just going to strip the flavour right out of your juice. Produce your vapour, but it's vapour and you'll get burnt tastes. I've had it a lot myself, and know plenty of other people have as well. Um, so, the solution was, uh, what I've done with this, uh, and, and, and I've got all my... I've got all, a blowtorch and all sorts lying around here at the moment because I've quite literally done a fresh one uh, before I started filming is that uh, I quite literally oxidised the mesh now that's black it's not dirty um, what I've done is first of all May harden it by using a blowtorch. So uh, well, what I've done, I've taken some mesh, some mesh like this, uh, rolled a piece of it, just a short piece, and, and not rolled it very tight at all. It needs to have um, an open core. So so what you can do is you take an unfurled paper clip like this and roll the mesh around it. Um, once it's all fairly solid, you can pull that out. and You've got a core then. Uh, I then use the 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 blowtorch to um, burn it red hot, douse it in some water, dry it off, burn it again, douse it in some water, dry it off, and then burn it a third time, douse it in some water, and then burn it off. Now, <laughs> this is sounding long winded, and there's more to this process as well because then what I do is I take a cigarette lighter. Um, and using the yellow flame of a cigarette lighter, which is the dirty flame, because I mean the blue flame in the in the blowtorch, what that has done is just hardened this. It's not oxidized it. Oxidization happens with a dirty flame. So what I then do is I, using a pair of tweezers, holding this wick over the, over a dirty flame, heat it up until it's red, and then I douse it, dry it off, and then I put some PG on it or some VG if you're PG intolerant, um, and then I light it again, and I keep doing that until, I mean, I only, I only have to do that two or three times, and what happens is, it starts spitting out, and it'll spit out little O-rings, uh, little, you know, little smoke rings, and, and little plumes of vapour, and, and what have you, that's what you want it to do. And basically, that means that uh, it's not only con it's not only oxidised, but it's also um, the capillary action in it is fully flowing. So once you've done that, uh, you then slide it into uh, get this the right way round. You slide it into the hole like so. I mean, I normally I use a larger piece put it in as far as I need to, and then I, I, I cut it across there. Uh, and then when this sits inside, you're safe in the knowledge that if the stainless steel mesh touches the element at all, it isn't going to short, it isn't going to produce that bad flavour. And in many ways, you want it to. I should also say that when I do that with the, uh, with the wick, uh, I don't put any fiberglass inside it. So the stainless steel, that is pure stainless steel mesh feeding down onto a little bit of fiberglass work at the bottom there. So I'll assemble that there. 
and then what you do is you put on your, the collar and push in your tank cart like that. Something else that I do here, when I'm, when I'm using tank carts on repairables, on a brand new cart, this seal here, ten, you know, it's, it's not punctured. What I'll actually do is I'll puncture it with a screwdriver or a safety pin or whatever. I'll puncture it myself and not rely on the spike within there to puncture it. Uh, I found that the tank cart lasts me a bit longer doing it that way. Uh, and as well as that, when I'm using like the RY High Five, um, because of the shape of the uh, the spout on these bottles, I don't even have to take the, the silicon off. I can just pop it in like that, uh, squeeze and fill, and I'm good to go. So there we have it. That's the, uh, the Bully A2T. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put it on my, my Don uh, in mini mode. Um, not using a variable voltage device this time. Um, somebody did comment on uh, I always use variable voltage devices, which I do usually. Um, but sometimes, like everybody else, like a change. Um, so yeah, Don in mini mode. It's a nice small mod. Um, okay, so let's see how this vapes. <sighs> Forgive my sniffles. Um, so, Bully A2T. Opinion. Well, first of all, the uh, the draw is better than a normal tank atomizer. It's a bit tighter. Um, not too airy. Some people may find it airy, um, but I I don't I don't find it airy really. Not at all. Uh, it's, this is quite flavoursome in this uh, with this setup. Now I was using this before without the. I was using using uh, a coil made out of 0.159 nichrome um, and an untreated uh, wick. In fact, that was the wick that I showed you that was um, untreated. Uh, that was the wick that was in here, and it was it was okay. There was a lack of flavour. I could I could sense that there was flavour there, um, but there was flavour missing, if you know what I mean. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me. So basically, um, I do find that it's probably increased the flavour by oh twenty percent, twenty five percent, something like that. I can tell there's I can tell there's flavour there. I can I can taste it. Um, as you see, plenty of vapour. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, nothing is all wrong with the vapour produced on that at all. Um, one thing I haven't commented on which was a point also raised from my uh, from my last review, was the positioning of the air hole. Now all I'll do is I'll put my thumb there, uh, and I'll twist the rest off. I put my thumb there because that's where the air hole was positioned. You see where I've got my coil? I've got my coil on the opposite side of the terminals to the air hole. And what you don't want is for the air hole to be right behind the coil here, because if you think of the fire triangle, triangle uh, he says that and he's trying to remember the fire triangle himself, um, fuel, oxygen and ignition. Um, the hole there, you've got too much 
air and ignition and not enough fuel going on. Um, so you get a really raw, raw vape. So what you need to do is make sure that you, when you position this, that you position the coil on the other side. If you look, it's actually, you can't tell, looking at the position of the terminals, which side that is. So it's worth, when you're making up, when you're about to, you know, when you're going to make up a coil, just actually making a mental note, or even, and I have done it before, taking a little, a felt tip pen or something, and just marking which side the air hole's going to land on, and so that you can set the coil up opposite to that air hole. So that's the A2T. I will reiterate that this technique of using the oxidised um, wick um, will work on the Mark T bug. <coughs> now, this review is also slightly different in that technically I'm going to be covering two atomizers here. It's not really. There's actually one atomizer, it's just that there's also the A2TM, which is the, 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 the mega tank size. Now, um, the mega tank size is, is basically, it's, it's, it's a double sized card, basically. Um, now what I've got here is the A2TM upgrade kit, which is a larger size collar, and obviously a larger card. Um, that card didn't come with it, but you do get cards that come with it, um, and some more mesh and, and and stuff. It quite literally, you just replace the top section on your A two T. Take that off. Screw that on. There you go. That's an A2TM. Simple. Um, I like the fact that setting at Bully Smoker has uh, has introduced these upgrade kit kits. Uh, he's done it. He's done it for all of the A2 series of atomizers. So you can get an upgrade kit to convert an A2 into an A2T. You can get a kit to convert uh, an A2T to an A2. And obviously you can also get the kit to convert an A2T into an A2TM. Which is great because it means that you're not buying a whole new atomizer. If you want a whole new atomizer, then you know that's absolutely fine. That's great. Um, and in the same way, the A2TM works very well. It, it 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 does it works just as well as, uh, as as its smaller version. And I'll just show you, just so you know that I'm not. Uh, now again, I'm using exactly the same liquid. It's exactly the same coil as before. We've just got a larger capacity tank. Now I will say my experience of the Type A and Type B tank atomizers, the regular ones, which is the Type A. This is that size. Type B is this size. Um, my my personal experience is that these, the Type Bs, um, provide more flavour. I'm not quite sure why that is. Uh, it might be because you've got a larger volume of, uh, of air coming through. I'm not sure. But that's, that, that's just how I feel about it at any rate. So let's just... Uh, whoop, nearly dropped the camera then. Let's just show you what this one looks like. This is the A2TM. Throat's still a bit sensitive because of the cold. I would actually say that that's a bit more of an airy draw than than the, the A2T. Um, even though it's the same air hole, the same coil, um, I think that's just because you are literally you are pulling up 
a bit more air through the size of it, I guess. Um, now, the coil went a little dry there. Now, that's something that you do get, even with this arrangement. You will get a point from time to time where you'll get, a, you know, not as much paper being produced, or you'll get, uh, or you'll get a dry tug. What I do there is I put my thumb over the air hole, just give it a suck, and that pulls down juice through the wick, through the stainless steel mesh wick, and onto the normal atomizer wick um, down to the core. see more flavour coming in so that, that's um, obviously what would happen yeah much better flavour much better flavour I'm getting that through now so really what's to say really um, in all honesty I think uh, flavor wise I still find that the the the, the, um, the A2TM or the type B or whatever you want to call it <coughs> excuse me um, that has more flavor still for me um, it is a slightly airier drawer and it could be because of that that there's more flavor um, this has a, a tighter draw, cer most certainly. There's, there's, there's absolutely no question about that. It does seem to produce quite a bit more vapor, but I'm, I don't know if that's kind of like a straw effect or, you know, with a narrower cylinder chamber. I, I, I'm not sure. Other than that, it's really hard to differentiate between the both of them. Um, so what I'm going to do, really, is I'm going to give scores for both. To me, they're, they're, it's much of a muchness. And I think, because I'm struggling for things to say, you can probably, you can probably tell that for yourself. Is if you want the capacity, go for it. Go for the A2TM. Um, if you're not that bothered about the capacity, maybe you know one mil will do you... You know, for as long as you need it to, um, or you've got a stack of one mil carts, you've not got so many um, of the two mil carts. Um, sorry, I can't remember if I did say that the large ones are two mil. Um, then certain, then then the A two T might be your better choice. Um, certainly, if you if you want to try minimise costs and reuse carts you've had from from Type A uh, atomizers, then the A two T might be you know more advisable everything else about them i mean you got to remember that the business end is below here and it, you know is this bit here um the rest of it is just just juice supply um so anyway i'll move on to my scores because i'm starting to waffle um looks wise <sighs> I struggle a little with this one. Um, I, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I don't find this to be aesthetically pleasing as this. You shouldn't really do it that. Do it like that. I find that much nicer looking than that, and I think that's because. This and this, you've got, you've got symmetry of proportions. I think when you've got the type B on there, what you end up with is actually something that looks top heavy. Um, it does, it just looks top heavy. It doesn't look right. If the rest of this was the same, the diameter as this, then it'll look great. 
it's a trade-off though because the reason why that's happened is it's enabled setting to be able to produce two atomizers and an upgrade kit for both of the atomizers or a downgrade kit or whatever which way everyone he's, he's basically he's kept this section standard you know up to the pin um, so you can use the both there's, so there's the, there's functionality and you know there's function in that form and I can't knock him for that um, it does mean though that this one looks you know where whereas the the type a looks a bit steampunky and that just doesn't look quite right aesthetically um so so basically if if it was just an a2t uh, on its own i'd give it a seven like that i'd give that a five so what i've done is i've averaged a score and i'd give it an overall of six for looks um Another reason for that, I'm not too keen on all the on all the knurling. I know why it's there. Um, it's for ease of grip and stuff. But the Mark T can uh, gets away without it, um, and just has these, you know, these sections here, uh, and that wasn't particularly difficult unscrewing, etc. So the knurling, I don't think the knurling isn't really uh, an essential element in my view. Um, ease of use, well. Because of the pin, it's slightly more complicated than an A2. Um, however, that's only the first time you set it up. Or if at some point you decide you're going to replace the wick that's within the pin. Um, the rest of the time, it's as easy to use as the A2, really. Um, you have to use a diff slightly different wick wire arrangement rather than using a big piece of wick you're only using a tiny piece of wick single strand of wick that you wrap the coil around um and you know you, you're not you're not using something that's got loops and stuff to to help with wicking and i'd say because of the because you're working on a single piece of wick it's a little bit more fiddly to to do the coil and what have you um so, for ease of use, where I gave the A2 uh, a 7, I'd give the A2T uh, a 6. I've, I've marked it down one. It's still fairly easy to use, I just because there's a couple of extra processes, because the wick's slightly more, you know, it's a little slightly more fiddly, uh, I think that just, that just takes it away from it, really, a little bit. Um, Flavour-wise... Um, again, I'm going to give an average score. I find the I find the flavour of the the type B to be much better than the type A, as I've said. Um, I say much better. No, it is. It is much better. Is it as good as um, a Mark T? Well, the the flavour of the, of the Type A or the, the the A2T is on a par with the Mark T when used in this mode. Um, it's nowhere near the flavour that you get from an A2. Um, and I'd say that the flavour in an A1 was better as well. So, for flavour for this, uh, for, for the... For, for this one, I, w I would have given a 5. For the Type B, or the A2TM, I would have given a 6. So, averaging out, it's 5.5. Uh, um, adaptability, well, it's not as adaptable as the A2, uh, again, because... You know, you, you can't drip with this. Um, you, you simply can't. However, because of uh, settings upgrade kits and downgrade kits and all the rest of it, you've got more options. You can buy into it um, and try other things within the bully range without having to spend the whole amount again. I mean, the upgrade kits aren't cheap, don't get me wrong. But they're much cheaper than buying the whole atomizer. So 
you know, that's something that I didn't factor into the A2 because it obviously it didn't occur to me. It wouldn't have really changed the score on the A2, I have to admit. Um, however, with the A2T and the A2TM, um, you know, the upgrade kits are all very well and good. You've still got to buy into it. Is there anything else you can do with it when you've got it? Well, when, when, you know, it's a tank atomizer. Uh, it's not for dripping. You can't really drip with it. So, for that reason, I'm giving its adaptability score as a 5. Um, the A2 is, is certainly far more adaptable. Uh, value for money? Well, again, you know this is available in aluminium and stainless steel. Um, the price... It is, you know, they're not cheap, they are expensive. However, um, I know people who go through uh, a regular tank atomizer in two weeks. You know, and I've come across somebody who actually got through a regular tank atomizer in a week. Now, that's in a week, that's what? How much are they? Nearly £10? Eight, eight to ten pounds. Um after seven months, that's paid for itself, then. Simply. It's paid for itself. So, the remaining smoke, you know, the remaining uh, vaping for the rest of the year, using, you know, there's no atomizer charge. So, that, that pays for itself within a year. Um, so, for me, I mean, it's the same with, with other repairables, don't get me wrong. But I think it's, you know, because the tank atomizers are more expensive... I think that the, the, the you can justify the slightly increased cost for buying the A2T or the A2TM uh, based on the fact that it's going to pay for it itself within a few months, you know. Um, so, for, so for value for money, I've given that a seven. Um, overall, um, well. Uh, I've given uh, six for looks, uh, six for ease of use, five point five for flavour, five for adaptability, seven for value for money. Uh, so all told, uh, I would give the A two T and the A two T M an overall score of six out of ten. Um, if you're really into carts, if this is the format that you prefer, then these are going to be the atomizers for you. Um, they will work on, you know, pen style batteries, on the Ego style batteries, I should say. Um, I'm running this on, on, on a, um, you know, a 16, is it, yeah, it's a 16340 battery. It's running at 3.7 volts. Uh, which is you know comparable to an ego battery um, and it works really well I can understand why these are quite popular with people who um, tanks are convenient uh, and if that's what you want if you want that convenience then you know that's great that these are for you um, Anyway, I've waffled on long enough. Um, the next uh, atomizer that I'm going to be looking at is is something slightly different. Uh, we all know it. It's it's really one of the most popular and most sought after ones out there at the moment. I think, uh, other than the A2, uh, and that's the IATI. Um, so, look forward to that. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, I'm sorry for my cold. I do promise you I have got my sense of taste back so and, and I've tried to stay as objective as possible. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I think it's about time for me to sign off. Take care. Bye bye for now.